Thank you, Dr. Badrinath. This is Bala Subramaniam. Friends of the Netralaya, book club members, for coming after Amita Bachchan's uh, <laughs> more than a bit of a disadvantage. However, the, the good thing about it is that I'm not saying anything of myself. Uh, I'm just introducing you to the book book's contents. It's, I have been privileged to be associated with the Netralaya, albeit in a peripheral way, with all the, all the films that have been made by them. In fact, the film that was made before the building came up and the various films that they have made to let the world know about the work that they are doing, uh, I've had the good fortune to be able to voice. So I am really as much of a friend of the Netralaya as anybody is, perhaps more. What I propose doing is to spend 14 minutes, I believe this is what it will take, and I saw the agenda and that's what has been given to me coincidentally. It's that everything about the book is so interesting that you want to read it, but obviously you cannot do that. I have selected from the book excerpts, not necessarily in the order in which they appear, which epitomize the mission and vision of Netralaya, of the dedication of its, of the people and the doctors who worked there, where it is, where it was, where it is, and where it hopes to be. And I hope at the end of it, you will get an idea of institution building, as Mr. Amitabh Bachchan just said, and you will interact with the doctor on various queries that may occur to you. So, let me change my glasses. I'm the despair of ophthalmologists. And of course, the opticians love me because I need two pairs when, they, when somebody else needs only one. All right. Victor Hugo once said, there is nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. The year was 1974. A group of young doctors of different specialties met in a big bungalow in Mailapur, Chennai to discuss the need to create world-class hospitals in India at affordable costs. It was a vision to run the hospitals with a missionary spirit with the objective of providing quality care to the haves and the have-nots. Dr. Sengamed Srinivasa Badrinath had just emerged in India in 1970 after completing his fellowship and training in vitreo retinal surgery in the United States. After a few years back in his homeland, disillusioned by the existing circumstances, his wife Vasanti and he were contemplating their next move. Should they go back to the US or continue their work in India? This chance meeting of doctors gave strength to his idea to work towards establishing an eye hospital which would provide not just quality eye care to the rich and poor alike, but would work towards producing world-class eye care professionals through outstanding programs and carry out India-centric research. Out of this idea was born Sankaranetralaya. The journey to find a set of advisors and philanthropists led him to some very committed individuals who came together to form the Medical Research Foundation and on 6th September 1978, Shankaranetralaya became a reality. Every care was taken in choosing the name of the hospital and its philosophy. Sam means good, Kara means doer, Netralaya can be translated to temple of the eye. The name itself therefore defines the philosophy of the organization. Sums up Dr. Badrinath, Today we see a great challenge ahead of us, the eternal challenge faced by any organization, more so by one that has not for profit as its objective. Let the word Shankara of Shankaranetralaya ever remind me and my associates of His Holiness, the Paramacharya of Kanchi's command, that there be a missionary spirit in the project. Let the word Netralaya 
constantly remind me and my colleagues that the place of work is an alaya. Work will be our worship, which we shall do with sincerity and utmost love. Today, with about 1,400 employees, including 82 ophthalmic consultants, about 100 research students, over 1,000 alumni, and 12 centers across the country, it is not just the premier eye care institution in the country, but among the best in the world. <laughs> Dr. Badrinath was 38 years old when he joined Shankaranetralaya. More than 30 years later, Shankaranetralaya resonates this work ethic with as much sincerity and enthusiasm as when it all began. On an average, more than 2,000 patients walk the corridors of the hospital in a single day, seeking help. About 100 surgeries are performed every day at the Netralaya, besides the numerous free health camps conducted by its outreach wing, the Jaslok Community of Thalmic Center in the villages of Tamil Nadu. There is no ideal profile for successful entrepreneurs. They can be gregarious individuals who are simply daring and intuitive. They can also be quiet individuals who are very cautious and analytical. In a world of ingenuity, spontaneity and rush, the ability to realize creative ideas into sustainable ventures is only possible with a superior capacity to perform. In order to turn good ideas into successful ventures, entrepreneurs know that the key to success is the art of day-to-day -day management. So they get a variety of efficient people to rally around them, delegate, empower, and reward them. That is what Dr. Badrinath did, propelled by an unfaltering spirit, and it came naturally to him. <laughs> January 29, 1982 was a red-letter day in the annals of Shankaranetralaya. The five-storied main building with a floor area of about 45,000 square feet was inaugurated by His Majesty Juan Carlos, the King of Spain, and the Queen, Her Majesty Sophia. Many of the new units funded by donors were also opened on that day. They included Sri V. Venugopal inpatient block, the LMT Operation Theatre Complex, the Nathella Sampattu Chetti Clinical Laboratory, Bhagwan Mahavir Vitrio Retinal Surgical Laboratories, and the Srimati Gita Kothari Memorial Outpatient Department. The Vitrio Retinal Department in Shankaranetralaya is the hub for the specialty in the Asia Pacific region. The maximum number of surgeries in this subspecialty is done here. One third of all the activities here revolve around the Vitrio Retinal Services. Of the 82 consultants, 18 are in the Vitrio Retinal Department. The retina being Dr. Badrinath's strength, and he, among the best vitreo retinal surgeons in India, he has personally built up the department into one of the best in the world. The slogan of Netralaya is affordable medicine. Even as technological innovations are necessary, technology cannot strip the medical profession of its soul. A balance has to be maintained. In corporate hospitals, it is not unusual for patients to be arbitrarily subjected to various high-tech diagnostic tests that they may not require, simply because it makes commercial sense for the institutions. Netralaya steers clear of such unethical practices. It has mastered the art of scaling up by cutting down on costs. Netralaya continues to be rated as number one among all ophthalmological hospitals in India by a latest survey done in 2011 by Week magazine. Donors see considerable impact for their contributions. The professionals who work for Netralaya are there for the sheer love of serving and honing their skills while serving an institution which has state-of-the-art facilities. For many patients, Shankara Netralaya is not just an eye hospital. There is healing of the mind there. It is a place where they come into contact with people who leave a positive impression on their minds. Corneal blindness is one of the biggest problems in India. But sadly, there is no organized national eye bank to streamline eye donations. The CU Shah Eye Bank at Shankaranetralaya operates 24 hours throughout the year 
It obtains, evaluates and distributes eyes received as donations for use in corneal transplantation, research and education. Shankaranetralaya also gave the world the ciprofloxacin ophthalmic solution. Tips are forbidden in the hospital and there is a common good fund set up for that. Most patients who are on top of the moon after getting back their vision insist on expressing their gratitude to the doctors and staff. Dr. Badrinath even received a pair of Hawaii slippers once from a poor patient as a token of gratitude. The rule is that the staff should contribute half the cost of the gift they get to the common good fund. This is an initiative started by Dr. Badrinath. The money collected in the common fund is distributed among the class 4 employees on the eve of Deepavali or any other auspicious occasion. Gopal Krishna Gandhi, former administrator, diplomat and governor, has said, and I quote, What has drawn me to Dr. Badrinath and his colleagues and to Shankaranetralaya is their professionalism, which is both the result of scientific pride and technological finesse as also a realization of its human purpose. There are very few people and institutions which have credit. Now, the word credit has a very specific connotation in the world of finance. But in the world of human transactions, the word credit is not so specific. It is not a sharp word. It is a broader one that encompasses confidence, faith and ability in the person who has credit to attract unconditional faith. Now, Shankar Netralaya has that credit. What constitutes credit? What constitutes the ability to instill confidence? In my limited understanding, it is a combination of a few things. One is the cleanliness of intention of the person. If a person says, I wear white, or wear saffron, or I wear ash on my forehead, and therefore I am clean, I would say no. To me, self-advertisement of clean intentions is a guarantee of its opposite. It is a person who by the economy of his words and his deliberate actions shows that he or she is a person of clean intentions. That is the first sign of credit. Shankaranetralaya, led by Dr. Badrinath and his colleagues, has that unique quality called credit." Unquote. For the late Nani A. Palkiwala, a man who was perceived in India as the nation's conscience keeper, Sankaranetralaya was very close to his heart. He had often described it as the best managed charitable organization in India. Quote, when I came to an institution like this, when I come to an institution like this, it replenishes my faith in the future of India. It makes me feel proud that I am in the midst of human beings who are human, and who make this country great by their dedication, sense of discipline, and service to their fellow men." Unquote. Music maestro, the late M. S. Subalakshmi and her husband T. Sadasivam were deeply attached to Sankaranetralaya. M. S. Amma, as she was fondly called, gave away the royalties for three of her music records to Medical Research Foundation. Later, the large-hearted couple did three benefit shows for Shankaranetralaya in Delhi, Mumbai and Kolkata and gave away the entire proceeds for charitable work in the hospital. Shankaranetralaya's list of celebrity patients goes on and on. There was MGR, who came to Dr. Badrinath for a cataract operation under cover of night to avoid public glare. In fact, the doctor performed the surgery on him around midnight and discharged him before daybreak. Former President K.R. Narayanan stayed in the hospital for 10 days in 1999 for surgery and various follow-ups. Field Marshal Sam Manickshaw was an ardent admirer of Netralaya. Quote, I have got twinkling eyes and Shankara Netralaya is a remarkable institution to which I keep coming to keep the twinkle in my eyes. Unquote, he said in jest. Former, Super, former Supreme Court Judge Justice V.R. Krishnaya described Dr. Badrinath's genius as nature's gift to ophthalmology. Dr. Vasanti Badrinath says, and I quote, 
the practice and quality of patient care in Shankaranetralaya is not one of just emotional excitement or the ability of the patient to pay, but it is built on an institutionalized process driven by principles of love, hope and compassion that has stood the test of time. The patient is a fulcrum around which everything happens." Unquote. It is Dr. Badrinath's appeal that works magic both with the small and big donors. He inspires them to contribute generously to the hospital's activities, and they trust him implicitly. Dr. Badrinath's image in the public domain is spotlessly clean. When donations become the mainstay of an institution, there is always the danger of playing into the hands of donors. Here also, the doctor walks the tightrope with astute integrity and honesty. Today, one question before Sankaranetralaya is, should it focus all its energies on the Chennai unit? Or is there a need to spread its wings in order to bolster growth plans? The answers to these and many other problems are not easy to find. Perhaps time will show the way. Dr. Badrinath says, and I quote, the challenges that my team and I have met and overcome over the last three decades are a thing of the past. Today, when we look forward, we see a renewed vision, a great challenge ahead of us, that which is faced by any organization, more so by one that has not-for-profit as its objective. We have always been proud of our very DNA that today drives our organization. 1,400 individuals, one vision. There is obviously very much more in the book, much more detail, much more description, much more from many more people. Uh, if this excerpt which I have read, which is from the book, enthuses you to get hold of the book, please do so. And if there's anything that you would like to interact with Dr. Badrinath with, please feel free.